Caching is very popular in system design and today we are going to learn everything related to caching. So without any delay, let's get started. So caching is nothing but a simple way to store the data in an expensive piece of hardware that is specifically designed for very fast data retrieval. Cache usually sits between your application and your database. So application rather than making call directly to the database, it is going to make call to your cache that is sitting in between to see if the data is already present there. If the data is present, that's great. Application can complete its work in a very quick manner. And if it's not, it will go to the cache and try to do it. Now let's try to understand this with a real life scenario. Imagine that you are a person who likes to get your morning coffee in a very specific order from a very specific cafe and your order is quite complicated. Maybe you have like double soy milk, triple mocha, caramel, whipped cream, coffee, espresso, combination of these things with like four ice cubes, something like that. You are very picky about it. But the thing is, you are a very nice customer and you go to the same cafe every morning and ask for the very specific order. Now, eventually, after maybe a week, what would start to happening is the moment you, you would enter the cafe, even if you're sitting or standing in the line, one of the baristas would actually start making your coffee without even you ordering it. Because barista knows that number one, your order is complicated. Number two, they already know, know what you are going to drink. And number three, uh, if they start making it, by the time you walk to the front, your coffee is already ready and they can just hand you out the coffee. In this scenario, number one, the memory of the barista is actually being treated as a cache because barista is keeping track of your order. And the thing is, the memory of barista is limited because barista might be serving 500 people a day. They are not going to remember order of all 500 people. Number two, the moment you walk in, the data gets loaded into the cache. So in the memory of barista, they know what is your order and they start working on it. By the time you come and ask for the ask for your order at the counter, they serve you the, the, the coffee that you're looking for, which means the data that application is looking for is being served in a very fast manner. So the data processing and data retrieval is quite quick. And this is basically the logic on which cache is being designed and operated. Now the question comes if caching is so good and so great, why don't why do we even have primary database? Why don't we just use cache for all our purposes? The thing is cache is very expensive and because cache is expensive, you want to make sure that the data we are putting inside the cache is actually serving the best needs and eliminating the need for application to directly communicate with the database. And it is breaking that channel in between, which means now we will have to concern about that. What are the strategies we are keeping in place to add or load data into the cache? And when we are going to start removing data elements and add new data elements into the cache. So now let's start talking about caching strategies. So the first strategy is actually quite simple as the name suggests least recently used. We are going to keep track of all the elements that are currently present inside our cache and we are going to remove the elements that has been least recently used to add new element. Let's see this for an example. Suppose we have all of these values currently present inside our cache and for each one of them we are keeping track of that when were they last used. So let's say that this was used like one minute ago, this was used, this was used two minutes ago, something, 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 right? So in this case, we are assuming that this E is currently last used five minutes ago and we are going to have our application. Application would first try to see that if the data that application is looking for is present in the cache, if that is the case, the application would get the data. If it is not the case, application would call database. And we are also considering a scenario where if application calls database, which means we expect that some other application or some other user might request the same data again for the database. So whenever a new request would come to the database, we would try to populate the cache with that data, expecting that that data will be used sometime recently in the uh, near coming future as well. So let's assume that now this application wants a data that is value number F. Now currently F is not present inside our cache, which means application has to fetch value number F from the database. Okay, let's say that this flow has completed, but now this database needs to update value number F inside the given cache. Now cache only has limited amount of space. So which value are we going to remove from the cache? The answer is quite simple. We are going to remove the value that was least recently used. 
and in this case this value number e was the value that was least recently used so we are going to remove that and we are going to add value number f in this case and we are going to mark that this was used like zero minutes ago or just right now so now let's say that the new application tries to access value number f then they would be able to use it quite easily and then if we have to remove any other element that has not been accessed recently we can maybe remove this value number d and add some value like h or something so this is this would be the least recently used policy now very similar to that is our second caching policy that is fifo first in first out now first in first out is very similar concept to a stack and this is exactly what it is that we are going to keep track of all the values that came in first sorry this is not stack this is actually queue so we are going to keep track of all the values that the, that came in which sequence and depending on that sequence we are going to remove those values as well so let's say that first we enter value number a to our cache then b then c now we wants to enter a new value d inside the cache so first we will have to remove one value so we are going to remove value number a because this was the most uh, first value that came into the cache so this is a very simple strategy and then we are going to add value number d and this is how we can maintain the values inside the cache uh, next policy or the third caching pr principle is least frequently used. So least frequently used is also very similar to least recently used. But instead of keeping time, uh, keeping the method of number of time it was used, we are keeping track of the frequency of the usage. So let's say that we currently have three values inside our cache. Once again, let's assume A, B and C. So we are seeing that in the last one minute, A has been used five times or A has been called five times. B has been used six times and C has been used uh, three times. Now, whenever any new value that we need to enter, we were going to first remove C because it was the least frequently used. And then we are going to add value number D over here. Next uh, caching policy is uh, time to live. So time to live is very similar to a simple caching mechanism where in any particular cache for every single element we don't care how many time it was being used or not used all we care about is what was the time it was entered into the cache and we can have a policy that uh, after every five minutes we get rid of that element so after five minutes we are going to get rid of this value number a and we would add a new entry called c or x or something 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 over here so this is a very simple policy that you can understand based on the name now next one is a random replacement and this random replacement is actually nothing but randomly we pick any one value and we take it out of the cache so this is not a very good scenario because it relies on not keeping track of the data that is currently present inside the cache so let's say that we have data one two three four present in the cache now we want to add value number five so randomly we can kick any any value out and place value number five instead of it now after adding value number five let's say that if we want to add value number six once again it could be possible that we end up removing value number five that we just entered to enter value number six because we are randomly choosing all the elements that we want to pick and that we want to remove so this is not a very good uh, scenario next strategy is write through and write back strategy so what is write through strategy first let's try to understand well, typically, whenever any application wants to make changes to the database, what we can do is that the app actually write that data to our given cache and then uh, we can have our database that needs to be updated as well. So in the write through approach, our application is going to write the data into the cache. And at the same time, the data is also going to be updated into the database as well. Typically, you would use this strategy whenever you need high consistency. And why we are doing this because we are assuming that typically when we write a new data into the application more than likely that new data needs to be fetched or retrieved on the very fast basis. So in that case we can have a write through policy where we are going to write into the cache also at the same time we are going to write into the database. Now second one policy is a write back policy and in the write back policy what we are going to do is we are going to have our application that whenever application needs to make any update we are only going to update the cache and once uh, a cache has been updated so now whenever any new application or any new user wants the data the data can be quickly retrieved from the cache and after
after a predetermined time, we will ask cache to write that data back to the database so that we can have it secured for the longer period of duration. Now this is this method is very fast data retrieval whenever a new entry be, is being made because writing data or accessing data to the database is, is an expensive operation and this is a much faster approach. But you can only use this scenario when the consistency is not an issue. So even if you, you lose the data, then also it's fine. So when you don't care about consistency, you can think of write back solution as one of the good caching strategy. When consistency is paramount, always think of using a write through policy. And that brings us to our seventh and last policy and that is cache aside policy. So cache aside policy is a scenario where data is loaded uh, on into the cache on demand. So first application is going to check that whether the data is currently present inside the cache or not. If the data is present, that's great. Then data is going to be retrieved from that. If that is not present, application is going to go to the database and then database is rather than sending back uh, the data to the application, it is going to send back to the cache and then cache is going to send back the data to the application. So this is one of the scenario. So these are seven main most popular caching technologies. And and now let's see some of the popular examples of different caches. Now first let's talk about few of the different types of caches. Number one is a regular cache that talks with the database where you can load some data into it and you can have your applications point to that particular cache. And there are many examples for that like Redis, Memcache, uh, NGIX and then there are Apache server, traffic server based caches. All of them are really popular. You can use either one of them. No issues with that. But I want to put my emphasis on a specific type of cache that is very popular especially for companies like Netflix, Amazon Prime or any content delivery platforms like YouTube or something that is called CDN content delivery network. So how CDN operates is that whenever you have your data that you need to load, let's say that Netflix has a new movie that they wants to promote. So what Netflix would do is rather than keeping the files of that particular data in their own primary data sets, they are going to put it in a something called content delivery network. You can imagine that as a similar to cache, but because the sheer size of files are going to be so significantly large, rather than being put on a single box of uh, cache, it is actually put on a network of content delivery that is meant to be very fast for the content delivery scenario. So let's say that the TV show Wednesday came out. So Wednesday became really in overnight in internet sensation and it was one of the most popular Netflix shows. So for that that show Netflix is not going to store all of the data files in their own primary servers. They are going to store those files into the content delivery network. So if some person sitting in Indonesia or India or Japan wants to see that movie rather than going or speaking with the direct database, they can get all the data from the content delivery network. So the concept of caching is still there, but it's a network or cluster of caches that is interconnected to spread out the information geographically. Now same CDN can be used in order to define the movies based on the geographic location. So a, a movie called RRR that was very popular. Uh, it was a Telugu movie, but basically it was like a sort of Bollywood, Tollywood, South Indian kind of movie. Uh, it was really popular all across the world. It, you, can, you must have seen it in Oscars and stuff like that. But still, it won't make much sense to put that movie in maybe some African server or some American CDN server because not many people are going to view it. But it would make enormous sense to put it somewhere close to like Indian or Bangladeshi or Pakistani CDN server where there are more people who speak that move, speak that language and understand that language and uh, there is a very high likelihood of that movie being seen. So these are some of the examples and strategies whenever you are designing a cache, you need to understand how to store the value. And cache is not limited to any one particular type of industry. If you think of an example of Instagram, they are also using cache and they are using it in completely different manner. Let's say Cristiano Ronaldo or Virat Kohli, if they are planning to post something on the Instagram, they have millions and millions of followers. So in that scenario, their post has to be put in the cache and through cache, it needs to be distributed to all the other places like cache or CDN or something like that. So it makes much more sense to apply cache in that regard. But the only concern you will have to think about whenever you are trying to build a caching solution is how you can ensure the efficiency 
and what is going to be your strategy to put the data inside the existing cache. So I hope my video was useful to you. If you have any comments on how could have I improved my content or uh, any other things or if, I, if anything I missed, feel free to point out in the comments. I tend to read most of the comments and respond to them. So till then, take care.